first into the den, a hunter from Edmonton, Alberta, here to convince the dragons a big investment in his idea could be legendary. Hello, dragons. My name is Aaron Arcand. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. And I'm here today to pitch to you guys an original format television show. And the subject matter of this show is more ludicrous than what I'm asking for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for $100,000 for 100% of the show copyright and title that I'm going with so far is Searching for Sasquatch. One man alone in the Canadian wilderness for six months doing his research. I'm gonna do it total Survivor Man style, do all the filming myself. These things are out there, they do exist, I've seen them. No. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Oh my what god. the okay. heck? <laughs> Stop. That's not I funny. Even, I didn't even jump. Bigfoot doesn't scare me. That's not funny. It's kind of funny. That is not funny. Oh. It's just mean. <laughs> Actually, is that Bigfoot or Sasquatch? I have bigger feet than that thing. That's it? That was Sasquatch coming in? <laughs> Aaron, can I call you Joe? Sure. Thank you, Joe. So, have you been working on this for a long time? I've been doing Sasquatch research for about 25 years. Wow. What got you into the Sasquatch research? I had my first sighting when I was 15. Oh, you've seen it? I've seen them more than once. How many times have you seen it? Uh, I've seen them 11 times. Five times in which I've actually seen their face. Really? Well, I went out uh, to uh, an area near my hometown. I was going out to check on the uh, local blueberry patches to see yep. if the blueberries were ready. I it was it. sitting amongst the blueberry patch, Eating almost some in a yoga style position. Around and I was well, you know, grabbing everything off the blueberry plant and sticking it. It was just sitting yoga there. style, did you say? He was just he was just sitting there like this, and he was reaching out. He would just take everything, leaves and blueberries, right off the plant. In the small, yeah. eat it, reach, do the same to another one. Was he saying like, no, oh. No, no, no. No, no, he wasn't making any noise or nothing. He was just sitting there eating the blueberries. I mean, what did you do? You must have almost peed your pants. Well, I had already had an interest in the creature. Um, and when I saw it, I knew what I was looking at. Aaron, where'd you get the Bigfoot? What's that all about? Um, actually, this yeah. is a plaster cast oh. of a Sasquatch footprint in Alberta. Did you find it? Yes, I found it, yes. Anybody want to have a closer look? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, Jim, you might find this interesting. Be an XRCMP. Not That's that, an actual not... cast? Uh... <laughs> Jim, you're Sasquatch? Jim, if you look at this closely, you'll be able to see dermal ridges. You can tell that's a scar. Yeah. And that was actually pointed out to me by so a medical walking, doctor. Maybe. You know what, the money is not important to me. I just, I just want to do a good quality show on the subject matter. I want to do the first season in Alberta, and then each season would be a different location someplace in Canada that is known to be a Sasquatch hotspot. If you don't find one, do you think the show is going to be a little bit of a drag? No, Finding Bigfoot hasn't found a Bigfoot yet. They've had some successful shows with some activity. Oh, so there's a show called Finding Bigfoot? Yeah, but it's yes, not Sasquatch. Yes, it airs on Animal Planet. There's over a million and a half people a week that watch Finding Bigfoot. Are you quick on your feet? Are you entertaining? Like, can you carry the show on your own? I, th I think I could pull it off, yeah. You think so? Like, is this all you take with you? This is some of the equipment that, that I do uh, take with me. My primary piece of equipment is my thermal imager, okay? You can fake video. You can fake infrared video. You can fake night vision video. Absolutely 100% beyond a reasonable doubt, you cannot fake a thermal mm. image. Do you have pictures? Um, I, I did have some pictures before. Unfortunately, last year I had a break-in in my vehicle and my no. laptop was stolen. Aww. 
Yeah, off the laptop. Aaron, yeah. you, you might want to back up those files yeah. next time. Pictures of Sasquatch. Well, I, I actually, I, I have a, a hard drive now that I keep at home Good. in the yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big Sasquatch guy. I don't know Sasquatch. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm a city boy. I'm, I wouldn't lie to you. You know, I grew up in Toronto, Young Street. So I'm going to have to. You saw a lot of Sasquatches down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, we don't talk about those. I'm out. Okay. Thank you, though. Aaron, was, thank you. Actually, I was hoping for you because I live most real people media. think that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm on the edge sometimes for, for good ideas. And this could be, be some refinement. I'm going to pass as well. I, I mean, I think you're in trouble, truthfully. I think it's going to be a tough idea to sell. I don't believe there is a Sasquatch. Uh, no offense. I know that you think you've, you've seen it. I wish you well, though. I hope you uh, it proved me wrong, but I'm out. This idea is so ridiculous that I cannot even think of making an offer on it. So I'm out. Okay. It could be a number one show on whatever Canadian network it airs, Arlene. You get the right production company, it could be pulled off good. Yeah, Aaron, I mean, I, I respect that you have a dream to do this and that you have a dream of seeing the Sasquatch again and capturing it, but uh, it's not a dream that I can help make true, so I'm out. Okay. Yeah. Aaron, I don't know, it's, it's a tough deal. I've never been offered to do a deal for 100% of the company before. The show will work, Jim. People are watching. Oh, With no. the footage and audio that I provide. Aaron, you know what? That foot just scares me. I'm out. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, boy. That's too bad he lost the pictures, though. It is. Who doesn't back up their stuff? It's such a shame when you have valuable things like Somebody proof that a Sasquatch exists. Next in the den, a Toronto entrepreneur who thinks the dragons can help his safety solution see the light of day. Hello, dragons. My name is Scott Hedrick. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, and my product is Sun Clips, and I'm looking for $75,000 in exchange for 33 and a third percent. Here's the problem. When driving towards the sun, drivers lower their conventional sun visor. The first thing they can't see are traffic lights. Next thing they can't see are street signs. Finally, they can't see the brake lights of the vehicle in front. This is dangerous. Eventually, the sun sinks below the level of the sun visor, and drivers hold up a hand to block the sun while steering with the other. This is more dangerous. Until now, drivers have been faced with two options, welder's goggles or a white cane neither of which is desirable. I have invented the solution. How does the white cane help you? The white cane is what people will need if they continue to peer into the sun's rays without proper eye protection. Oh, oh you mean they're going to go blind? They're going blind. Yes. Uh. The solution is sun clips. Sun clips is a clamp which quickly slides onto your conventional sun visor, an articulated arm, and an oblong disc. I'm going to pass out samples so that you can experience how effectively it works. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Very simple idea. Thank you, sir. You move this as you need it. So dragons, if you hold it like this, just lower the sun clips, lower the disc, and pretend that my head is the sun. It's magic, eh? Now I see you, now I don't. Exactly. But you got a blind spot. Just where the disc of the, the circle of the sun is, yes. Yeah, but if it happens to be a motorcycle or something is smaller than this, it could fit right into that piece. 
That's true. You it's, could have a problem. But, but, but with your conventional sun visor down, you can't see anything in that entire line of sight. You're going to get some liability with this one. I mean, remember, you're, the sun is not only moving, but so are you. You're going to have to make subtle adjustments to this on an ongoing basis. That could be a distraction to the driver. If you're driving on a somewhat curvy road or if you're changing your direction frequently, yes, that is going to be a limitation. Have you sold any? Uh, I have not. But no, I, I haven't got the packaging done yet. I'm not a, I'm not a marketing person. And so I'm still hung up on packaging, plus the fact that I've sort of How run out of money. How much have you invested in this? Approximately $75,000. $75,000? Yes. Wow. And the money came from? Uh, savings. That's a good way to flush it down the toilet. Industrial molds are not cheap. Scott, I'll tell you one accident I went to when I was in the RCMP. Do you remember the little pieces of paper you used to put up and you could write a note on the top of your sun visor and you had a little pencil up there? Yes. I went to a head-on one day and it just, the corner got caught. The woman that was sitting there with this little thing came down, sliced her from here to here with just the paper. This is sharp. I mean, this could cut you unbelievable in an accident. I'm saying this very seriously, my friend. Well, since you mentioned accidents, Jim, uh, approximately 40% of collisions occur in the hours when the sun is closest Absolutely, to the horizon. Absolutely, but I'm not saying that they don't happen. I'm just saying your chances of coming out of this thing without being lacerated all over the face is going to be bad. Well, the idea of the sun clips is that it'll prevent people from getting into collisions, particularly no, rear-ending vehicles The accident front. rate is not going to drop. Trust me. I'm out. I, I agree with him. But I think the other thing is, again, constantly readjusting it subtly yeah. is going to be a major distraction. distraction. People are already texting, and we're running into all those problems on that front. So for that reason, I'm out. Scott, Jim is right, you know. The legalities of anything going into a car now is very difficult. For that reason, I must go out, sir. OK, thank you. I don't think you should spend any money on it anymore. Don't even bother packaging. I'm out. Might have another use you haven't even thought about, though. Like, it could be like a dragon tool to block out pictures. Because I can't see you at all right now. And I also can't see giving you any money, so I'm out. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, dragons. Good God. I just actually cut myself on it right now. That's, that's dangerous. Next up, a pitcher from Edmonton who hopes the Dragons are hungry for a deal. Hi, Dragons. How are you? My name is Gino Rodriguez, and I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. I'll be asking for $150,000 for 40% of my business. I own probably the most unique business that you guys have seen in eight years that actually makes money. And uh, it's a restaurant that's actually going to be giving uh, Jim a run for his money up in Edmonton. And I'll actually bet, Jim, that my customers drool more over my food than they do at Boston Pizza. Ooh. Ooh. Them's fighting words. Them's fighting wow. words. The gauntlet has been thrown down. I oh. am the proud owner of Doggy Style Deli. And you guys have guessed it. I own a restaurant for dogs. Dogs. Oh, no. Oh, oh come on. Oh, Bruce is so I, in. I actually do. Oh, boy. Here we go. Now, these are my kids, Caleb and Abigail. Oh, they're so cute. Right here, Caleb. You guys have got to be kidding me. <laughs> hey, kids. Say hi, dragons. Hi. Hi, hi guys. I can't go see Grandpa. Gino's Doggy Style Deli is a full-fledged eat-in or take-out restaurant for dogs. Is that a dog or a cat? That's a chihuahua, half-cat, half-dog kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Well said. <laughs> the meals range in price from around $4 for the small Yorkie size to around $7 for the large Mastiff size. Just when I think I've seen everything in the day, I never would have thought about a doggy restaurant. That's because it's effing ridiculous, that's why. <laughs> I just don't get it. Are the tables that size? No, our tables are about two foot by four foot. Benches set up for the dogs on each end. I and mean, for the, the dog people. gets up on a bench and eats? Or on the table. Or on the table. Yeah, we've made them so structurally sound that even the Rottweiler could get up on the table and it won't fall. What kind of things can they order? Uh, our menu consists of German Shepherd pie, 
Jim, oh. I like it. That's very good. Shih Tzu stew, Chinese pug fried rice. And our latest and greatest creation is uh, poutine, which is poutine for dogs. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Well, the human beings that are with the dogs don't get to order anything. You they can't. don't. They, what we have had people do is we did do we're a wedding reception. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, no seriously. <laughs> We're sitting here talking about dogs eating at a ret. We're going to be talking about them going to Harvard next. How do we get the dogs educated so they, they can get are. into they're, university? They're working on that right now. Planet of the Apes in reverse. Don't you have a dog now, Bruce? I have a dog, and there's no damn way he's eating at any deli. I can tell you uh, that. That you know of. Holy that you know of. Man. They just ate the centerpiece. They just eat the centerpiece. They ate the centerpiece. <laughs> you guys have got to be kidding me. Uh, Don't be offended by this, but no. I think it actually is going to do. Well, we've already got a franchisee signed on for Calgary. Really? Yeah. What are we coming to? I'm serious. Like we sat here listening to an idea about a doggy restaurant. Dogs. You guys have sat here and listened to paper mache bidets. Oh, there it's been worse. I'm done. <laughs> I, I am. Look, I am so done on make... this idea. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. You guys go ahead. <laughs> I got work to do. <laughs> I think the difference here, Bruce, is, you, and I, I hear don't you. Don't talk I, to me. Yeah. No, I want to Seriously, just, don't talk to listen, me. Talk to the rest of these dogs guys. Have the, to eat I don't want to hear it. You're not going to get, you're not going <laughs> to. Are you in or out? I am so out. It's like, I'm, I've left. I've left the building. <laughs> I'm oh, here, but I'm, only, I'm virtually here. Yeah. Just pretend I'm not here. If you change no, your mind, hey. you can come back in. I'm not changing my mind. Gino, you know, I'm dying to ask, what are your sales? So first year, we did $25,000 the whole year. Yeah. Second year, we bumped it up to $125,000. Yeah. Wow. Third year, uh, between January and April, we had already exceeded that. We were over 130. Then May hit, and uh, we had a fire. Yeah. And uh, we lost our three dogs, oh, our no. prized pit bull, and uh, two um, English bulldogs that we had rescued. And so was the fire? We, cooler caught fire and oh, took That's the place That's really sad. Down. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. Yeah, that must really have been hard, hard. especially... Especially so, the dogs. Yeah. Took us a year and a half to come back. And business has been great. Uh, we opened December 1st, and we've already done 130,000 in sales. Well, That's very impressive. Why do you need money? I mean, this is a pretty low-cost enterprise to run. Because we're trying to franchise. We're trying to get it out there. Everybody that hears about us is like, why isn't there one here? Why isn't there one in Toronto? Why isn't there one in Calgary? So w with your guys' expertise and with some of the money, we can get it out there. You're yeah. doing pretty well. Like when I kind of extrapolate from your current sales and I yeah. look at your margins, which have to be huge. Yeah. You don't have to have waiters or anything like that. No. It, your business is pretty strong right now. It is very strong. Do you know, when you buy a franchise, yeah. you're buying the brand power, you the are. buying power, the yeah. system. Yeah. This can be done without any of those things. Like somebody could just set up. Yeah, but our, our, recipe. our recipes, we've gone through these recipes for the last 10 years to get to, to the point where we are. Because but dogs it, aren't overly discerning eaters. Well, no, but if you change their diet, they will get diarrhea, they'll throw up. We've gotten to the point where they can <laughs> come. Messy. We've gotten to the point with our recipes where that won't happen. Tell me someone hasn't had a crap on the floor in a restaurant. <laughs> hey, you're that out. Is, that is not yeah, happening. You're, you're virtual that is, man. That is virtual not, man. Guaranteed you're out. that that is not happening. You're not allowed to speak anymore. Guaranteed that that has happened, and we take Jim, care of that too. Jim, you know that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, we're guys. talking to invisible. Are you guys I thought still you were out. I thought you, you guys were out. are still here. Oh, I, 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 I sit squarely on oh Bruce's side God. on this one. I think you are going to make money, uh, but I sit squarely on his side, which I think we can't really. Yeah, I'm out. Okay. I think it's too early for you to franchise, to be okay. perfectly honest with you, because you got to settle what your business is and how much you do a year. Yeah. There's a lot of dog lovers out there. I love my dogs. Absolutely. So it's work different. hard at it and get a, a couple of years under your belt. But remember, franchising is going to cost you a lot of money to get involved with. Okay, for that reason, I'm out. Here's what I think. There are crazy people that, have, that do this, and you should profit from it. I think it's nuts. I'm out. What are you going to do, David? I, I like your business, and I think Thank for you. you, running it, you'll make a very good income. But yeah. I, I don't think it's a great franchise opportunity because, again, I think the franchisee can just knock it off. There's not a lot of value add coming from the brand. And, and I have to side with Bruce a little bit on this one. E even though I like the business, it does seem a little too far out there. Okay. Wait, you're okay with a dog <laughs> hotel? The but dog. you're not okay with the dog restaurant. Tell me the dog. difference. Didn't you do the doggy diapers last yeah. year, too? The doggy, yeah, doggy diapers, so doggy good. hotel. What's the, where doggy. do you draw the line, here. David? I draw it right here. <laughs> <laughs> that all being said, I'm, I'm out. Thanks, guys. Have a Thanks. good one.
I think he's going to make a good I income. I think he's going to make a lot of yeah. money. I think he's going to make a good But why do you go money. there? What's the reason? People that have a dog or hey guys, a cat that this I is I think it's family. over. It's over. We're done. We're done. <laughs>